Yo guys, it's Hangover2 here, and today I want to bring you a full in-depth guide on how to complete the Zombies Easter Egg on the map D-Machine. This is going to include detailed descriptions of all the steps as well as tips and tricks on how to complete the more difficult ones. So, let's get into it. Once you've turned on the power, go to the anomaly in the middle of the particle accelerator room. Going through the anomaly will take you to the dark ether for the next step, which is building the pack punch machine. Once in the dark ether, you will want to go to one of the fast travel portals in either the crash site or the pond. The portal you need will change every game, so look on your mini-map to see which one has a star over it to determine which one to go through. Once through the portal, you will be taken into a small room either next to Speed Cola or Deadshot. In the corner of this room, you'll see a ghostly outline of the pack punch machine. Grab it and head back to the middle of the particle accelerator room in order to build the pack punch machine. This next part is optional, but I recommend you do it in every game since it gives you a free Juggernaut perk and a chance at an early free Wonder Weapon. As a side note, don't do this if you currently have a Megaton on the map, as it will kill all zombies on the map, and we want a Megaton for a couple of the next steps. To do this step, you want to shoot five orbs that I'm showing you right now. If they can be shot in any order, this is just the order that I choose to do so. The first one is in the corner of the grate at the top of the stairs above the Pack-a-Punch machine. The second one is under the platform where the armor upgrade station is. The third one is on top of a pipe near the ceiling between the entrances to Speed Cola in the med bay and Deadshot in the weapons facility. The fourth one is behind the computers next to the control room with the power button. And the fifth and final orb is down beneath the pack punch platform in the upper left hand corner of this barrier. This one can be hard to see, but if you crouch and come close to the wall, you should be able to see it. Once you've shot all five orbs, you will be taken to the dark aether and all players in your game will be teleported to the stairs above the pack punch. There will be zombies all around the room dancing, and there is a group right next to the Pack-a-Punch holding a box. This is referred to in the zombies community as the Coffin Easter Egg. Once they stop dancing, you will be taken back to the real world and be able to open that coffin for a free jug perk, some salvage, and a couple of weapons which can include the ray gun or the wonder weapon. Most of these Easter Egg tutorials will show you how to do the steps that relate to each other together. I'm going to deviate from this just a bit in order to help you get this done at as early of a round as possible. Now, earlier I said don't do the coffin easter egg if you have a megaton, and there's two reasons for this. The first is because if you want to be real efficient with this easter egg and get it done at as low a level as possible, you need the first megaton to shoot this fungus on the side of the tree by the pond. I suggest standing right next to the fungus and still within eyeshot of the megaton, and then when he fires, you just duck behind the tree so he hits the fungus. You'll know you did it right if the fungus starts glowing purple and you get a voice line saying that the fungus has been chemically altered. Wow, that was a lot of fungus. This will be used for one of the Wonder Weapon Elemental upgrades later on. So if you don't get insanely lucky with your loot from the Coffin Easter Egg, don't worry. There is still a way to get a free, guaranteed Wonder Weapon. The first part of this involves killing the Megaton we talked about earlier. Once you kill a Megaton, it splits into two halves. When you kill the second split, it's going to drop a keycard. Just a warning that the keycard only drops on the first Megaton that you kill, so if you don't pick it up right now, then you may be searching the map for it later on. Pick up that keycard and take it to the weapons lab by Deadshot. Stick it in this machine with the blinking red light and you'll be able to pick up the die remote. Now go to spawn and get a train of zombies. Take them into the Nocturne on Toten area and interact with this crack in the wall to remotely trigger the die machine to suck in zombies. After about 15 inch zombies vacuumed in, you will get an audio cue saying that the die machine is full. If you aren't able to do this on one activation, just wait for the die machine to cool down and you can interact with the crack in the wall again to get the suction trap activated. Continue doing this with as many trains of zombies as it takes for you to fill up the wonder weapon. Now go back to the crack in the wall and interact with it again to discharge a die machine and have it blast the door off to open up this little room. You'll see a skeleton holding a die machine which you can now pick up. A good habit to get into is right after picking up the die machine, come to the top of Noct and shoot this crate off the wall. Then go down the rubble to the left and suck in his canister since you're now conveniently down one ammo. And finally, go down to the pond and pick up the flask that fell out of that crate. Put it under the purple fungus from earlier and let it sit for a minute or two while it fills up drips coming off the fungus. Both these items are going to be used later on for elemental upgrades to the wonder weapon. The next step of this easter egg is to build the aether scope. So go to the dark aether and let's get this started. This aether portal can be in a different location each game, so find yours by looking for a star on the map. Once you enter the dark aether, you're going to want to search for three locations for parts to build the aether scope. They spawn one at a time and in a random order, so if it's not in the first place you look, then go check the other locations. Just a warning, every time you pick up a part, there's going to be a bunch of plague hounds that spawn near every player. So try not to bring 15 of them to your teammate who's already fighting a pack of dogs himself. The first location to check is at the crash site on top of the plane. We're going to make a pit stop right here to shoot this fuse box and open it up and pick up the fuse inside. This is going to be used in a later step for one of the Wonder Weapon upgrades. The second location is in spawn under the stairs. And the third and final location is in the particle accelerator room right between the entrances to Deadshot and Speed Cola. If you don't get all three parts in one go, you're going to have to go through another round or two until another aether portal spawns and you can continue where you left off. Once you pick up all three parts, you're going to be teleported back to the normal world. Go to the particle accelerator room to this crafting table right behind pack a punch to build the aether scope. For the next step, you want to take this aether portal right above Speed Cola. Go into the side room and pick up Vogel's diary right next to the computer. Now you have to give it to three ghosts around the area in order to get the password for the computer. The first one is right behind Speed Cola. Interact with him and give him the diary. This next one isn't part of the easter egg so you don't actually have to interact with him. The second one is off to the right inside the trials room. Again, interact with him and give him the diary. 
And the third and final ghost is in the particle accelerator room right next to the table where we built the aether scope. Again, interact and give him the diary. Make sure to give each ghost the diary. This is a common thing that I've forgotten to do and I had to wait until a later round for the portal to spawn to try the step again. You don't actually have to stay at each ghost for the duration of their speech. Once one is started, you can move right on to the next one. After all three are done speaking, you'll be teleported back to the real world. Go to the computer room where you found the diary and interact with it to enter the password. Once you do, the container hanging from the ceiling will start to glow purple. This means it's time for us to start upgrading the wonder weapon. The first elemental upgrade we're going to do is the electric one. To get this one started, make sure you have the base version of the wonder weapon, the die shockwave. Go to this portal right below the pack punch. This part's actually very time sensitive, so I'm going to have a teammate activate the portal so I can already be in place and ready to start. You can do this in one run without stamina up if you have a teammate activate the portal and run the exact route that I'm showing you now. You may also be able to do this entire part by yourself in one run if you have stamina up. Go to this part of Nocturne Toten and have your teammate activate the portal. Now aim up at the crystal and suck up its power. This can be done either from here or the top of Nox near the Wonderfizz machine. These crystals can be done in any order, but I like to start with the one in Nox since it's farthest away, so I cut out the most time by not having to run to it when my teammate's activating the portal. Come back to the particle accelerator room and shoot this box in the back corner. You should see one of the lights turn on if done correctly. Now run to Jug and suck up the power from this crystal. These crystals only charge up the next shot, so make sure you don't shoot the die machine or you'll have to go back and suck up the power again. Come back to the particle accelerator and shoot the box a second time. Now run to the final crystal in the pond. As long as you start sucking in the crystal before the Dark Aether starts to end, you should be good. You can carry this charge back to the normal world without messing anything up. Come back to the box and shoot it for the third time to power it up and unlock the electric upgrade, the Die Electro Bolt. Now go to the glowing canister from earlier. You can see that each of the four arms have a different color on the end. You have to shoot each arm with the element for the corresponding color. Find the yellow one and shoot it with the Die Electro Bolt. You'll know you did it right if the arm turns and starts pointing upwards. Alright, now remember the flask we left below the fungus earlier? Well, now it's time to harvest. Come back to the pond and pick up your flask that's now full of liquid nitrogen. Run over to the speed cola room and interact with this box to freeze the chains off it and acquire the dye cryoemitter. Shoot the blue arm of the canister and we're ready to move on. The next upgrade we're going to do is the fire one. Go to this portal in the pond to get it started. Once in the dark aether, make your way to the weapons lab. Interact with this machine right across from Deadshot. This will install the fuse we found earlier to cut through the elemental upgrade box with the laser. Again, we're going to jump to a different part here to save time and place the canister in this other machine in the corner of the room. Now head back to the pond and jump on top of this truck. Interact with the box on the back to get the thermophasic fire upgrade for the die machine. Now come back to the speed color room and shoot the red arm of the canister. For the final upgrade, you're going to need a plague hound. Either wait until it's a dog round or save one from the middle of a normal round if you do get one to spawn. Come back to where you place the canister and have the dog jump at you. When the dog is right next to the canister, kill it. This will cause its gas to be sucked up by the machine and fill the canister. Bring the canister back to the crash site and place it on top of this box. Either shoot or melee the box to release the gas and kill the vines around it. Interact again to unlock the Die Nova 5. And for the last time, come back to the Speed Cola room and shoot the green arm of the canister. With all the arms now up on the canister, this Aether Portal will spawn between Speed Cola and the armor machine. Go through it and come to this platform above Speed Cola. Interact with the Spectral Reflection and wait for him to finish speaking. Once you're taken back to the real world, pick up the Dark Aether Wrench that's sitting right where the ghosts were. Come to spawn and use the Dark Aether Wrench on this tank three times. Kill the zombie that comes out of the top and then use an explosive on the tank. If you don't have an explosive, you can make a Semtex or C4 using the crafting bench in the corner to spawn. Once the explosive detonates, the tank will shoot at one of the trees and crash site. Go back to the crash site and you're going to see this golden ball. Before you pick it up, I suggest killing all the playcounts that spawn when you approach it. These are just a one-time spawn and won't continuously spawn during this step. With all the dogs dead, pick up the golden ball and run back to where you picked up the Dark Aether Wrench in the Speed Cola Room. You run extremely slow since you're carrying gold, so try not to do this in the middle of a round unless you have teammates protecting you. Now place the ball in the glowing red case and you'll get an audio cue saying you need a specimen. Wait for a Megaton to spawn and bring him to the canister in the Speed Cola Room. You need to have both splits walk directly under the canister so it can beam them up. I found that it's easiest if you split the Megaton when it's already under the tank. Then just run to the opposite side of the splits until they're both beamed up into the canister. Get all your players in the game to go into the room with the computer. Then interact with it to end the round. Watch as the splits combine to form the scientist formerly known as Orlov. Wait for him to end his speech and then get ready to run. Once his speech is done, he will run into the power room and the doors will open. This will also spawn a lot of dogs and megatons, so make sure to get out of there as quick as possible. I suggest running to spawn and taking care of everything from there. This is the point of the game where you really want to upgrade your gear so that it's at least on par with whatever level you're at. On the screen right now, you'll see everything that I recommend getting before going into the final boss fight. It's a very intense fight, so you likely won't survive if you don't have strong enough gear. First up is the must-have category. I recommend that everyone has at least level 2 armor and preferably level 3. Everyone should definitely have Juggernaut for the boosted health, Speed Cola for the quicker reloads and faster field upgrade charge time, and stamina to allow yourself to shoot at zombie trains longer or simply just outrun them if you're at low health. You will have at least one Wonder Weapon in your game, and a Die Electro Bolt upgrade is by far the best for this battle. Next up is the nice-to-have category. 
The ray gun is the strongest it's ever been, but it's also the rarest gun in the game. So if you happen to get one, it can make a huge difference, especially once you get to rounds in the mid-20s. I found that the best chance of getting a ray gun is from fire sales. These aren't super great to rely on, but if you want a higher chance of getting a fire sale power-up, then I recommend doing trials and waiting to claim your reward until it stacks up to the legendary tier. If you do already have a wonder weapon and you end up pulling a ray gun, I suggest giving one of them to a teammate who only has regular guns. This will allow more players in your game a real chance of being able to contribute huge damage numbers, especially since this is a team effort and you will likely only use one of them during the entire battle anyways. The only field upgrade that's going to make a big difference is the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire has an extremely useful benefit of being able to boost your entire team's damage output by a ridiculous 500%. You heard that right, it grants a 5 times damage multiplier for everyone standing within the ring. This allows your team to absolutely destroy Megatons. And it's also just as good at getting you out of a corner as Aether Shroud or Healing Aura since you can mow down any crowd with ease. I highly recommend at least half of the players in your game run this field upgrade. If you're running at least three players, it may also be nice to have your best survivalist run an upgraded healing aura to instantly revive if anyone goes down. Even though monkeys take forever to throw in this game, they're still by far the best tactical equipment to have as they attract all zombies on the map and can save your whole team. Depending on what round you're on, you're going to want to have pack-a-punched weapons if you don't already have the die machine or a ray gun. Up until around level 18, you can still manage to deal decent damage with single-packed weapons, but anything over that and you're going to want to double-pack. Around level 25 is when I find that double-packed weapons start taking more time to kill, especially when it comes to megatons. I don't recommend going much higher than this unless you really want a difficult final battle, but if you do, then definitely go in with triple-packed weapons. Elemental Pop is nice to have for a little extra damage here and there, and Deadshot is great for aiming at the head. Quick Revive can be very useful if someone goes down, especially since you're going to be in a very confined area. If you have it unlocked and you can afford to craft it, a Self Revive is always a great option, as is the War Machine. And finally, if you don't have monkeys going into the final fight, decoys can help out a bit, but they won't have nearly the crowd control that monkeys do. Once everyone has enough gear, it's time to do one final step before going to the boss battle. Go through this Aether Portal in the living room of Noct, and then go talk to the Ghost of Orlob in the Omega Outpost section. Once he's done talking, he will drop a family photo on the table behind him. When you're absolutely ready to go to this final battle, pick it up. There's no going back once you do, which is why I suggest not talking to that ghost until you're already geared up, just so that nobody can accidentally pick up the photo and send you to this final battle early. Once you get teleported to the power room, Orlov will tell a long speech about how he wants to help shut down the machine. When he's done talking, he will run to a computer on the Pack-a-Punch platform and start disabling it. Your job is to survive the waves upon waves of zombies while also protecting him at three different computer stations. If Orlov takes enough damage, his progress will slow down and you may even fail if he dies. Although I've never seen either of these personally since my team is usually pretty well equipped. There will be some regular zombies, a good amount of dogs, and a lot of megatons compared to normal. This is where the Dielectra Bolt comes in. It deals an incredible amount of damage to megatons and has 400 ammo. Whoever has this gun should always focus the megatons, myaks, and bombers as soon as they spawn. As an added bonus, whenever you kill a split, aka megaton bomber, it will also drop a bunch of ammo for the wonder weapon, which will almost always fill you back up to max. Using the Ring of Fire can be a huge help to absolutely melt any boss zombie that spawns. I recommend staying on the upper ring as much as you can. This will give you a great vantage point to kill anything that spawns and also be able to protect Orlov at two of his three locations. Once he deactivates all three stations, he will speak again, then the purple barriers keeping you in the power room will disappear. There will be electric pillars everywhere that will do lots of damage to you and also physically block your path. So don't try to run through them thinking you can just sacrifice some health to get through. I know of two paths to escape to avoid all pillars. One goes through Deadshot and the other through Speed Cola. I'm showing you the path through Speed Cola. You have to go up the right side of stairs and jump across the gap. This can sometimes be hard since zombies climb up there and block your path, as you can see when I failed to jump across. If this happens to you, using your field upgrade should be able to get you out of the corner. Or you can yell and have your teammates save you like I did. Once you make it across the gap, run up the stairs in the trial area and go to the right towards Jug. Zigzag between the pillars in front of you and make it to the pond. Once you show up, the Exo helicopter will fly in. I don't think this will show up before 45 seconds, so if you make it there early, make sure to be alert and either train the zombies or kill them all off. Once one person makes it to the chopper, you win. It counts as a real exfil, so you will get any bonus XP or Ethereum crystals for whatever round you're currently on. And that's it! You successfully completed the main easter egg on D-Machine. Congrats! I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I tried to make it as clear and concise as possible while also giving you tips and tricks on how to complete this easter egg at as low a level as possible. And still staying a relatively short video. I'll be posting more Cold War videos in the future, so subscribe if you'd like to see more. Comment down below your thoughts on this easter egg, and also drop your Activision ID if you'd like some help completing it. I'm sure either myself or someone else in the community would be happy to help. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insanegamer52. Alright guys, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.